This is a review video for how to complete the midterm for the mold design mold theory class. Let's begin. If you go to the vertanu one forwards uh, dot com forward slash mold dash design dot html, you'll see you could go ahead and click on the midterm instructions, which essentially just brings up a drawing. You want to replicate this drawing. You can see the note on the right actually tells you to recreate the mold and and drawing using the part that's provided. So here's the part just right below it. Click on midterm part and go ahead and download that. It should appear uh, at the bottom there. You just click on it and it should launch automatically inside SOLIDWORKS. You could just do not hit feature recognition if you get that message. All right, we're going to go ahead and go to file, make assembly from part. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit the green check mark, and it should just drop the part file right into the assembly. Now we need to go ahead and make the uh, mold cavities. So I'm going to go over here underneath to new part and drop it in on the front plane, which just so happens to run dead center through the model. And now I'll go ahead and I'm going to go up to the top view here and the orientation and go to the front view orientation and draw out. A rectangle. Actually, I'll draw a center line first just to lock in our geometry a little bit better. Okay, and so now I could go to the center rectangle and lock in there and then go ahead and drag that out. All right, it's going to be 10 inches wide by 5 inches in height. Okay, and I seem to be having some keyboard issues there. All right. There we go. Okay. And then let's take a look at that drawing again here. Okay, so 10 by, oh, it's 10 by 6, and then one inch off the base, and it's centered. So we'll go ahead and click on this to here. That's going to be one inch. And then we could double click on this and change it to 6. We could also put those fillets in there. You'll see that there are some radiuses of 0.5. So we could go to the sketched fillet, set it to a half inch, and select the four corners. And apply. Now I'm just going to go to features. And here's where I realize I didn't insert a new part. Uh, actually, I did. I'm sorry. Uh, feature, I was just in the wrong spot there. I did insert it. I'm going to go to Extrude Boss, and we're going to have it extrude backwards. So just drag this back, and of course you would leave room for water lines and things like that. I'm going to extrude it two inches, hit the green check mark. Now we need to subtract this blue volume from the part. So we could go up here to Insert, Molds, cavity. Select the blue part and there you do have the ability to scale it. I don't recommend scaling it in here. Actually scale the part separately and then bring it into the mold. Hit the green check mark and now we, if we go to the explode view, turn off that component, we can now go to exploded view, click on the part and actually drag it out and see the cavity that it formed. I'm going to hit the red X to cancel the explode. And now I'm going to go ahead and make the other half of this. So for this, I could go ahead and I just go to the underneath insert component new part and drop it literally right on the surface of the first mold. Select that face again so it highlights. And then hit convert entities. And it should grab the outer edges for us. Which now we could just go to features and extrude boss. And again, two inches is fine. And from here, we'll actually hide this part. If you right click on the back part, go to the hide component, that little eyeball. And we just repeat the same steps. So we go back to insert, 
molds cavity. Select the actual blue part for the design component. Hit the green check mark. And now we could actually rename these two. I could turn off edit component and part two. I could actually just call that cavity one. And then the next one, I just click on it two times. You click on it once, count one thousand in your head, click a second time. It takes that little uh, half of a second wait or pause to work right. And this is cavity two. All right, let's unhide that other cavity. So click on show component. And now we could explode it. Now I think I might have made a mistake here. Yep, it's one and a half inches thick, each one of these. So you could double click on them and just change it to 1.5. Hit the little rebuild button right on there. Hit apply. Do the same on this one. Double click on this surface. Double click on the dimension, 1.5. Hit the little rebuild button to update it in the green check. Okay, so from here, let's just explode it. Click on Explode a View. Drag the parts away from each other. Make sure there's enough distance gap. You might even want to verify it in an isometric view. And as you can see here, I didn't move that far enough. Make sure there's enough gap between them. Hit the green check. And now let's go and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and save all. And I'll just save it in my uh, drive here as the midterm. And I'm going to save the components, in this case, internally. But note that in real life, sometimes you want to have separate part files. So you can save it externally. For this, it's just nice and easy if you're going to send me the file for me to verify it's all in one place. So we're going to go ahead and just save it internally in this case. The uh, internal and external are discussed in the advanced SOLIDWORKS class. OK, now let's go to File, Make, Drawing from Assembly. Go with the A ANSI landscape and hit OK. Grab the isometric exploded from the right and drop it in. Now we could rescale this over on the left. We could actually tell it to use a different scale, like maybe we want a quarter scale on that. OK, we'll move that, relocate it. We could even shade it or not shade it. We're going to use layers, so we really don't have to shade it. Let's take a look at that print again. We're going to try and mimic that a little bit. Okay, the scale here actually does say it's at a quarter scale, but this is on an older sheet, which had a little bit more room, but that's okay. Um, now we need a front, left, and top. So from here, click on this little tab up here to bring these back. Grab the front, left, and top. Okay, I'm going to hit Escape. And to change all these, I should really just change a sheet scale. So if I right-click on the Sheet 1 tab, and go to properties down below. It, you just didn't see it because it got cut off by the screen there. And just set this to a quarter. Then all of them will be that size. And now click on the very first one, the front view. And with that selected over here on the left, you could go ahead and turn on hidden lines visible and see through it. Let's go ahead and click on this. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and bring in the colors that you see on the screen. So if we take a look there at the drawing again, you'll see we have red, blue, and we have the brown for the actual clamp. So to get those layers in here, on the left in the feature tree, hit any of the drawing view little arrows and keep pulling them down, keep hitting those little arrows until you can see the three parts. Um, before And then the next thing, we want to bring up this little toolbar down here in the lower left. It's the line format. It doesn't come up by default. The way you bring it up is go up here in the upper right in the gray area and right mouse button click and find line format. It should then appear down here. Go to the layer properties, the second icon, and hit new three times. We'll actually go, uh, this should be fine. Now the layer three, the last one, we'll call this cavity two. And also, you could click on that little black box next to it. And we'll make that cavity 2 blue. Now, click on layer 2 and double click on that. You could go and call this the cavity 1. Click
click on the black button and change that to red. And finally, the first layer, double click on that and make that the part and make that uh, brown or green. I'll go with green and hit OK. All right, now that we have those set, now you go into the list here on the left and for example, a cavity two, right click, go to component line font. And in here, turn off use document defaults and go to layer and set this to cavity two. Hit OK, you'll see it changes to blue. Do the same with cavity one, right click, component line font, Disable Use Document Bots, change it to Cavity 1. And you see that turns red. Now the part, right click on the small steam engine part and go to Component Line Font, turn off Use Document Fonts and set it to Part. And that will take the colors of the part. Now going back to that layer area there, right now we are currently in the Cavity 2. We know that because it has a little arrow. So anything we add is going to turn out that blue color. Let's go to New, and let's say we want to add another layer for our bill of materials or balloons. So we'll call this um, some notes. And let's change it to something that we could recognize easy, like a purple or this uh, magenta, just so you can see it. Go ahead and hit OK. And now let's click on this. And we're going to go to the auto balloon. Click on auto balloon. You'll see the balloons appear. Just hit the green check mark and you'll see they do adopt the color of the layer that we had selected. And if you want, you can move some of these and grab the endpoints and relocate them if you don't like the way they're showing up. Now with that view selected, go to tables and you could go with the Excel based or the standard bill materials. I'll go with the standard bill materials. Just hit the green check mark. It's automatic. It drops right in. And again, because we're on that last layer, that's showing up on that layer. Don't forget to put your name in. And then turn it in. That concludes the review for the midterm.